Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is the first video I'll be posting and I just wanted to create a channel for first year teachers or if you're still in college completing your degree in education or if you're a high school student maybe thinking about becoming a teacher or if you're actually a teacher. I just wanted to create a community where we can all come together and just give advice, uh, feedback, and maybe some ideas. So I just graduated this May so I will be a first year teacher. I did complete um, a full-time independent internship, so I do have some experience with teaching on my own and not having a CT in the room with me. So for this video, I wanted to focus on interviews and give my advice and the most popular questions I've been asked at my interviews. At my college, we do mock interviews, so we interviewed with a bunch of different principals. For my independent internship, I also had to interview with the principal at that school for that position as well as the people who are like the head of my education program at my college. I have also interviewed with principals in my county here. So I'm just making this video because if you're a first year teacher like me, you're probably nervous and maybe you don't have experience with interviews. So I just wanted to make this video to help you out and to give you some tips. So feel free to keep watching if you're interested in the most popular questions I've been asked and just my tips on interviewing. So when I've been interviewed by principals, there's always like the five questions that come up each time. So the first thing is classroom management. And this is a question you will probably be asked by a principal. They will probably ask you something like, tell us about the importance of classroom management or how this looks in your classroom. And if you are a first year teacher, you might be thinking, I don't have experience with classroom management. You know, I haven't had a classroom of my own yet. But this is the perfect time to talk about your experience as an intern and what you saw your CT do or some of the ideas you would take from your CT and put in your own classroom. Or just talk about the research you've done on strategies and what you would do in your future classroom. For example, I talked about some of the things that I did during my level two internship to cut down on wasted time. So for example, I assigned each student a number and I put down like masking tape on the floor, little pieces, 18 pieces, and I put a number on them, one through 18. So my students, when we were lining up, I would say, you know, number one, go line up, or just go line up. And the students knew exactly where to go. They knew to walk quietly there, or I would have them do it again. So make sure when you're answering a question, you give examples and you talk about experience. I would talk about what behavior charts you might have in place for students, talk about transitions from um, subject to subject, talk about what they're going to do when they first get into the classroom and how you're going to teach these things. And I think for this question, it's so important to emphasize that this needs to be thought through and taught on the very first day of school. And the next question is data. So they will probably ask you something like, how do you use data to drive your instruction? And for this, I would talk about how I use pre-assessments, formative assessments, and summative in order to see where my students are at, if they are learning the information, and how I need to determine whether I need to pull a student aside to reteach it, if I need to reteach something as a whole group, small group, or one-on-one. -on -one. And for this question, it's important to give examples. So for example, I would just talk about how I was doing a lesson on 3D shapes and I did an exit slip at the end where my students needed to draw some of the shapes I was telling them to draw. And I you know, looked at the data and I determined which students understood it and which students needed to be pulled aside the next day just to be retaught or taught in a different way. Data, it's important to emphasize how you are going to um, take data. So like I said, pre-assessments, formative, summatives, and give examples of each. Um, so like pre-assessments, you could talk about KWL charts. For formative, you could talk about, you know, asking the questions throughout the lesson, anecdotal notes you know, exit slips, and then for summative, talk about if you're going to give them options at the end to show them what they learned or if there's going to be a, a test at the end. Just make sure you emphasize here what you're going to do with that data. Um, talk about if that's going to help you determine your grouping, your whole group, small group, one-on-one, -on -one. and just talk about this, how this helps you see the strengths of your students and areas they might need more help. For the next question, differentiation. This is something that's like really big now. This is something that was really emphasized in my education program at my college. Um, so differentiation, I feel like that can be something that's kind of difficult. Um, I don't know, I feel like that's still something I'm trying to work on, but I would just talk about what you saw in your internship, talk about um, the grouping. Was it heterogeneous? Was it homogeneous? Were, um, you know, talk about if the students were grouped by ability, interest, 
high and low students talk about centers when they were with their teacher what the teacher did maybe with the uh, lower students and what the teacher did with the you know average and higher students here I would also talk about how each student learns differently really emphasize that and talk about different learning styles how you incorporate each learning style into every lesson that you do talk about how you challenge those higher level students so for example you know don't it is good to say that you have them help the lower students, which is awesome, and that's something I did with my students. But I would also talk about maybe how you challenge them a little more. For example, say you're learning about the sound and I don't know. Um, and maybe you would give your you know lower average students a worksheet where they have to practice sounding out words with an in them and maybe you know writing those words and circling the an sound. And then, for example, maybe this worksheet would have words like can, man, and talk about how you give your higher level students some more challenging words. Maybe you give them words like can't, words that maybe the and is in the middle instead of at the end. They're doing the same thing. They're learning the same content. They're just challenged a little bit more. You could talk about how maybe if they finish early, you have them you know, label things around the room, like go find objects in the room where you hear the word can in them. Think of words that you hear the and sound in and try and sound them out and write them down. I would also talk about how I always pre-plan pre -plan my questions uh, for each lesson. So I think about questions I can ask maybe my lower level students and then questions I can ask to challenge my higher level students. For example, like why do you think she feels this way? Or after we finish a book, like how could you add on to this book? What's What do you think happens even though the book's over? How do they continue with their lives? You know, just different ways to challenge those students. So that's what I would say for differentiation and just some ideas. But again, this is something that I feel like I'm still trying to work on as a teacher and learn more about. The next question is about behavior. I think it's important to say, you know, I think it's important to prevent unwanted behavior. Talk about preventing it instead of acting upon it. For this one, I really talk about the importance of building relationships with students because I think this is so important as a teacher. And um, I talked about my experience with my internship with a student who would just shut down and how I made it a goal to, you know, talk to the student every morning and just ask him how he was doing, how his brother was doing. And I just saw the biggest change in that student almost immediately. It was amazing. The student went from shutting down like 10 times a day to, if at all, maybe once a day. And I would talk about when, when you build that relationship with students, they respect you, they want to please you. And as a result, you know, they're going to listen, they're going to try their hard. I would also talk about how important it is to create engaging lessons. Get your students up and interacting with the lesson compared to just sitting down and listening to the lesson. Because when students are engaged with the lesson, you know, they're going to be distracted from behaving badly because they're actually participating in the lesson. I would also talk about routines and how important they can be so that students know, you know, what's coming next. They're not caught off guard. They know what's expected of them talk about your behavior chart and just how you reward good behavior. So for example, I talked about how um, I had my students' names on the board and if I saw a student working hard, helping someone, I would just put a check by their name. And at the end of the day, whoever had the most checks got a Hershey's kiss and that worked amazingly for my class. So I would just talk about you know how you reward good behavior. But I feel like you also need to address what if there's behavior where that doesn't work. And for this, I would talk about, you know, as a teacher, if there's just behavior that you feel like you can't handle or nothing's working, um, talk about how you would talk to someone at the school who deals with behavior. Talk about how you would go to another experienced teacher and ask them for advice or if they've dealt with this behavior before and how they handled it, what worked for them. Talk about how you would research different strategies to help this student and really just see what works for them. So the next thing is you know, how do you interact with parents? And for this question, I think it's really important to talk about how you and the parent are a team and how important it is for this parent to know that you just have your their child's best interest in mind. Talk about how important it is to, you know, keep the parents involved with their student's education and to have that communication with them. So talk about how you would communicate with parents. For example, during my internship, we had an agenda that got sent home daily and in this agenda you would just um, you could write notes to the parents how their child did the parents could write you notes i would talk about sending maybe weekly newsletters to parents just to keep them updated on what the their child's learning and so they know what they can work with them work on and so that they know what they can work with with their child Does that make sense? <laughs> um, 
when the child's at home. I would also talk about how it's important to let parents know about volunteering opportunities and field trips. I think this is an awesome way for parents to, you know, be in the classroom and for their student to see their parents like interested in their education and involved in the classroom. I think that's awesome. So I would just talk about that, like how you can involve the parents and just make it a point to say, you know, you want to be a team with that parent and keep them updated, keep them involved with what's going on in the classroom with their student. The next question that I've been asked at most of my interviews is about technology. And in this day and age, this is something major that's um, come in classrooms, you know, with smart boards, with Chromebooks, and what are they called? like the Kindle Fire things, I don't know. But this is something that I've seen in all of the classrooms I've been in. I would just talk about the different websites that you've used. For example, I know Class Dojo is a major thing. About Kahoot, talk about how you have the students interact with the smart board in each lesson and how that engages them. I talked about how when I was teaching a lesson, I would always, you know, pull up a short YouTube video about to give them some background knowledge on what they were going to be learning in that lesson. For example, alpha blocks, if we were learning like the ah sound, for example, I would pull up the alpha blocks and they would watch like a short two minute video just about that ah sound. Um, this also gave students that visual and that background knowledge before actually like diving in deeper to the ah sound and how to spell it and sound it out, things like that. Talk about Go Noodle, how you use this so students can have brain breaks to just get up and dance. This is also something that I feel like I'm trying to learn more about technology in the classroom. And then at the very end of your interview, make sure you have questions prepared for the principal. They're interviewing you, but you should also be interviewing them because you want to know if you are a good fit for that school. So some of the things that I personally would ask the principal is I would ask them as a first year teacher, like what support can I receive? You want to know that this school has something put into place to help you. You don't want to just be thrown out there and wondering where, where can I go if I'm struggling? Who can I talk to for ideas? Another thing I would ask is what are you most proud of of your school or what is your biggest accomplishment? Um, I would ask what is your biggest challenge? What's the parent involvement like? Another thing that schools love is when they know you've done research on their school. So for example, um, you could say, I see your school's really into technology on your website. I saw that you all have smart boards. Can you tell me more about some of the websites that teachers use to engage their students with the smart board? Is there a common website that the teachers use um, in the school? Or talk about, I saw that there's this volunteering opportunity. Can you tell me more about that? Just let them know that you did your research on the school as well and you're trying to see if you're a good fit for the school. Okay, so now for my tips. I'm going to try and keep this brief because I feel like this is super long. So my first tip is to have a 90 second introduction ready. When you go to interview, I'm sure the first thing they're going to say to you is tell me, tell me about yourself. And for your 90 second introduction, make sure that you talk about your degree, talk about your experience in college, what you did with students, um, your experience, talk about briefly um, your internships, the grades you interned with, talk about what you learned in your internships, talk about your strengths, and I would end with my goal. So for example, I would say my goal as a teacher is to become a mentor teacher and to one day have interns of my own in my classroom. I want to share my knowledge with others and never stop learning as a teacher. That's how I would end my 90 second introduction. So just make sure you have your state your degree, talk about your experience in college, what you've done with students, um, your internship, talk about your strengths and your goals. That's what I would do. The next thing is, I don't know if you'll be asked this always during an interview, but be prepared to answer a question about, tell us about your teaching philosophy. This is something that is different for every single teacher, so I would just have a short um, answer to that about what your teaching philosophy is because you never know if that's something you're gonna be asked. Another thing that's so important is it's okay to bring notes to your interview. Um, this is what I have. I bought this from Staples. It's, it looks like a menu or something. They have leather ones that are nicer, but this is like the cheapest one. So inside I just have, take that off. Um, I have my resume on this side. And then on the other side, I just have notes about the questions I told you and just some important things I jotted down because I'm the type of person that I get nervous during interviews and I will, I would answer a question and maybe get in my car after and be like, shoot, I should have said that. 
So it's important to just write down on your folder just some things you want to make sure that you say. It's totally fine to bring these in just to help you because if this is going to help you answer to the best of your ability and show the principal what you're about, then yeah, go for it. So my next tip is to have your resume ready. I would also make sure you have two resumes in case you're, or maybe even three, because sometimes, you know, it's the principal interviewing you, the assistant principal, and maybe the secretary or someone else um, on the staff. So I just think it's really important to have more than one resume ready. And then another thing I did that I think um, would set you apart from someone else is to have an entry plan. So this could go along with classroom management, and that's the perfect time to bring this out when talking about classroom management. You could say, I actually have a final entry plan, and this talks about everything I'm going to be doing when I get into my classroom. For example, I have procedures that will be taught. Backpack students will come in and take their backpack to their cubby and unpack everything needed for the day. Um, when it is time to pack up, they will bring their backpacks to their seat and pack everything there. It talks about class jobs, um, notes from home, morning work, bathroom procedures, our tissues will be um, transitioned, end of the day cleanup, literally everything. And then also has, you know, my rules and how we're going to have an agreement as a class that they'll sign. So I feel like as a candidate, when you hand this to the principal, like you've already planned out what you're going to be doing right when you get into the classroom, that really sets you apart from other people. And this is awesome. My mentor told me about this. He was a superintendent and a principal for I think, I believe 30 or more years. And he was like, this This totally sets you apart from everyone else. Like you're gonna get hired if you do this. That's something I would highly recommend. And like I said before, when it comes to interviews, I think it's so important to talk about experience, talk about what you've seen in your internship. Um, maybe if you're a substitute teacher, talk about that. Just try not to, you know, briefly answer the questions. Um, just like bare minimum, talk about experiences or what you are going to do when you get into that classroom. Also, if they talk about, um, you know, how did you know, did you have a lesson that didn't go well? For example, I haven't been asked this, but I know this was in my mock interviews. If you answer this, make sure you talk about what you would do next time to improve it or what you could have done to improve it. If they're ever asking you like a question that's more um, talking about a mistake or something negative, make sure you always talk about how you could turn that around to make it positive and what you would do for next time. And then when it comes to practicing for interviews, I know me, I get super nervous before interviews and I, you know, I'm shaky and I feel like I'm gonna forget stuff. Make sure you practice before, practice helps so much. You could have your sister interview you, your mom, your dad, your, a friend. I personally can't do this because I just laugh too much. Um, so something I did was I would just pull up my computer and record myself talking and I would ask myself a question and then just talk to my computer my answer and then I could look back on it and kind of critique myself and then record myself again and answer it better. Another thing I did is when I was just like in the car driving, I would just like ask myself questions and answer them. If you think this is weird because you're, you're talking to yourself, just like, <laughs> just pretend you're on your phone. That's what I did. For my tips, just make sure you have your 90 second introduction ready. Make sure you know your teaching philosophy, bring notes. Don't be afraid to look at those notes. Have questions ready for the school, have an entry plan if you want to talk about your experience, talk about how you would improve different things. Just practice because, you know, fake it till you make it with confidence. I really hope this video helped you. If you want me to make a video about my teaching experience for my level one, level two, or both, just let me know or let me know if you have any other questions below and I'll try to answer or make a video about them. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.